My name is Jim Murphy. I work for the Trust for Urban Ecology and they are part of the BTCV group. I'm Malcolm Crew, and I've been working with the Trust for Urban Ecology and BTCV for about getting on for nine years, something like that. My name is um, Alex Greenslade. I've been working at uh, Dutch Upper Wood since the 29th of October 2009. I'm Melvin Harrison, uh, Chairman Crystal Palace Foundation. I've been Chairman now since 2001. Uh, I started off, uh, like a lot of members of the Trust, I started off um, as a, in a volunteer role, just by fluke really, not knowing what I was doing sort of thing really, I suppose, in one of those limbo areas. And uh, I saw a training course advertised with the Trust for Urban Ecology for, for doing, um, you know, looking at all different habitats and, and I thought, mm, that sounds interesting. Um, went on it and I suppose I got the bug from there really. Once you've got the Crystal Palace bug, uh, there's no cream or pill that gets rid of it. It's all things to all men really you know and it's it's something that you can uh, be interested in there's any aspect that you could possibly want history education there's always something new to see either in terms of animals or um, plant life it's a constantly changing environment so it's very stimulating well i'm a recent environmental science graduate um, i was really looking for experience in the field of um, practical conservation and this site, um, BCTV and the Embrace Corporation have given me a brilliant opportunity to really learn uh, an awful lot about uh, woodland management. These maps are of uh, a history of Dulwich Upper Wood in uh, basic form um, and it shows uh, what the wood was like before there was actually houses built on the site at one stage. And the wood before, before the houses were built was always woodland, so there was always woodland on this site. The ground underneath has been left relatively undisturbed all of that time before the houses were built. The houses were sort of built around the 1870s and uh, they were built predominantly because of the Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace came to the area in 1854. Um, it was originally in Hyde Park for the 1851 Great Exhibition for six months. Crystal Palace was, it was a bit like the internet of its day, I suppose. It was a very tactile learning tool. Sir Joseph Paxton, well, he, uh, he was by then Sir Joseph Paxton, yes. Uh, he wanted to leave it where it was uh, and turn it into a, a sort of winter garden type affair. Um, but um, Parliament uh, had already said that once your exhibition's finished, uh, Joseph, it's away. In the 1850s, up here, um, it was very much wood, like we are now almost, without the cars and the houses. And uh, Dulwich was probably the most important place around here. Um, and the Dulwich residents just didn't want it here. Um, but uh, Paxton won the day, it was built, uh, and, the, Paxton, uh, and the, um, the Dulwich residents by that time were very happy, actually, because they, they brought in a lot of money to the area. Crystal Palace burned down in 1937, unfortunately, for various reasons. There's been lots of theories about why it burned down. Um, mostly, I think, uh, the one that's agreed upon is the floorboards and there was cigarette was uh, went through the floorboards and smouldered away and then set it alight overnight. And after that, all of the houses started to fall, fall into decline, really. So a lot of the houses weren't used very much after that, I don't think. And the last house was finally demolished in 1960 um, and then the, the site was all boarded up all around the edge with corrugated iron. So it was just left for 20 years for the wood to do its own thing really. So when eventually it was turned into a local nature reserve in the early 1980s, there was quite a lot of work to do to, be, to get rid of quite a few of the weed species that had come in. It's, it's unique in the sense that it's actually escaped development and it's got a very layered history. You've got elements of um, ancient woodland running right through to, I suppose, the urban environment. So there's like a progression. You can read the landscape, you can see the ancient woodland, you can see the secondary woodland, you can see the remains of the houses, see the artifacts. So yeah, you can read it like a book almost this site actually. When eventually it was turned into a local nature reserve, we found an awful lot of stuff that had been demolished and just pushed into the ground because that's what they used to do at that time. They used to would just demolish the houses and the gardens and then spread it all out and bury it all really. There's this old stone bottle here 
from the George Hotel St Albans and that was, um, we found that recently in fact when we were putting in the foundations for the new Woodland Centre we're building down the bottom. We've got an awful lot of, um, an awful lot of Booth's gin bottles, we don't know what that suggests but maybe they were rather keen on, on gin. This thing here at the back which has a lion on it probably would have been part of either the um, decorative fascia of the house or perhaps a fireplace or something. When we open the new building, we're going to put these more, much more in context. And we're going to do things like, um, guess what this is. So, for example, we'll say, guess what this item is. It's actually a sash window weight that weights sash windows up and down. So that's quite an unusual thing. The whole focus of our work. It's a different thing to the, the parks, for example, which is the main sort of green space that's in Southwark and other boroughs. We're trying to encourage wildlife and biodiversity. That's the whole focus of our work, really. We're not horticultural, where it's very much based on ecology and conservation. And a lot of the stuff we do is actually almost opposite to, to what they do in parks, for example, because we're, we're actually um, leaving a lot of the stuff that they would get rid of. Even in the winter, there's a lot to do in the woods. Things like um, litter picking, path maintenance, Sometimes we get some trees coming down in the wood. It's a general regime of maintenance and looking after the wood, making sure it's safe, making sure it's a healthy habitat in lots of ways. We have individual site managers who manage the sites all the time and are based on the site, so they're able to look after the site like that. In London, there's not a great deal of uh, really good woodland habitat. And so the um, amenity value of this site is um, incredibly high uh, compared to what it would be if it was, say, in a sort of countryside setting. So it's about conserving the space as well as promoting it to other people. People um, from around the local community um, are actually incredibly um, in interested in, um, in sort of nature conservation and, um, and everything that goes on in this wood. So we've had uh, several activities here which um, are designed to sort of uh, bring people in and really uh, tell them about you know nature and, and why this space is really important to them. I myself have actually run an, an insect day here which uh, has evolved educating yeah, the local community really about the kind of things which are found here which which they may not have seen unless it was pointed out. These are among the biggest UK species of moth. This is a really good find, these are really difficult to get hold of. That's terrific. I'm glad that there is that the world is really opening up to this idea of sort of visiting nature and actually engaging with it rather than just sort of tearing it down and putting some concrete down. I think that Embrace, um, the Embrace Corporation, offer um, an absolutely unique opportunity for young people to really engage um, with, with natural uh, habitats um, in an urban environment um, and I've been very privileged to work with them.